What I wanted to bring up from the last lesson is what, what's the best way you would suggest a young drummer in the fill and see that he's in time? Because I know a lot of young drummers tend to rush their fills. Is it with a metronome or what would you think? I think, yeah, start with a metronome, definitely. Um, I used to practice everything with a metronome. The easiest grooves, slow grooves, medium, fast. The, the hardest stuff I could play, I would practice with metronome. And I would usually be surprised that I was playing faster than I needed to, you know. And then, it, then I started thinking, well, I wanted to have flow in, in the time and, and not upset the groove if I was going to play something a little bit fancier. So the metronome was my policeman. And then eventually I, I could just take, take it away and then I could play the thing consistently. But yes, I think practice with the metronome, with this stuff. Because um, you want to play music, you want to make the, you want to make it easy for the band. You want the music to feel good. You don't want the time to go out the window if you play something a little bit more complicated. So, if you're listening into a fill like you played, and if I have you play another one, when you come back in on the end of one, are you thinking about the horns and having to lay back a little more on that beat and no. then come back to? How do you? How, how do you? I'm kind of thinking it's part of the groove. Okay. I don't think it is. Um, I mean, as an exercise, we do learn it separately, but it should be one, two, or three, and four, and a one, and two, three, four. This, this never changes, right? The pulse, the actual quarter note pulse in this kind of tempo shouldn't ever change, no matter what you play. Play a fill for me again when you lay into that one here. That's so this is the, um, if it's the end of one is going to be the pretend band hit. The so band, one, band two, yeah, from three, the last sequence of the pros. One, and, right? So here, here's some triplet fills into that. And extending the bass drum, we didn't mention in the last lesson too. When you're yeah, because if it's a that. big hit, it needs that kind of foundation. It would feel empty without it. Um, for a big hit, mm -hmm. if it's a light hit, no. Or I might play the bass drum, but I might play, I'd play it light. You usually have a choice of whatever instrument. Usually snare drum or bass drum. You're gonna make a hit if it's an important hit with the band. Emphasizing the technique side of that also, because uh, we touched on that. Um, a little bit more in detail maybe on uh, getting the motion and the feeling of letting the stick bounce. How loose are you? I don't think we can say enough to the young students out there how relaxed they're supposed to be. Loose but in time. Yeah. Uh, not so loose that it's, that it's floppy or out of control. Uh, and it can be a subtle thing with the, with the Spivak method because we're, it's a three-point grip. These other two fingers aren't, for the most part, on the wood. But that allows... It, it's, an e it's an easier grip to bounce with. It's more difficult if all of your fingers are on the wood. You, you tend to have a tighter sound, which for some things is fine, but, but for this, or here's fingers, last two fingers are off. Here's on. Creates a different feeling. For In jazz, I think it's more effective to have a little bit of looser sound with the, with the triplets, you know. Um, and that's one way to do it. I'm just throwing the stick. But it has to be in time. You can't be, it can't be not in rhythm. It still needs to be accurate. So are, in, in your head, when you're playing around, are you, are you, Consciously thinking of one, two, three, four, one, two. Are yeah, you I might be singing a, a bass line. Okay. It's just, there's no bass here, but uh, I'm thinking of like a walking bass line at the moment to help. Yeah. And I'm, at this tempo, I'm not thinking of. There's lots of tricks to keep steady time at some tempo. Let's get them. What are they? Come on. This well, is the secrets of the pros here. If I was playing slower, I would probably think of an upbeat. One, two, a three. A four, almost like a shuffle rhythm in my head. Because when you play slower, it's easy to speed up. Yeah, that's, playing slow is harder than playing fast. Yeah, so I'm subdividing in my head. All, um, basically, the subdivisions that I think of 
are usually at a medium pace, no matter what the tempo is. So if I'm playing really fast, I'm not going to be subdividing so much. If it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, that's quick enough. That's a kind of a medium mm -hmm. rate, even if it's a I'm glad you think that's a medium, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> no, it's pretty well, fast. The, this is the quarter note is kind of a, that's not too fast. Um, if it's, so a medium. I could start thinking of beats in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If it was slower, I would definitely think of the upbeat. One, a, 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 a. Even if I'm not playing an upbeat, I'm thinking of an upbeat at that tempo just to help me stay in a medium rate, what kind of speed. If it's really slow, like... I'm thinking of a medium speed again. I'm triplets. One and a, two and a, three. emphasize that enough. I mean, those are the subtle things that are excited, uh, exciting me about having, you know, you come out. Because these are the, I constantly say, showing us what you're playing is something, and people will try and copy that and do it. But how can we get inside the greatest drummers in the world's minds and hear what they're really <laughs> thinking about? Because that's affecting what you're doing and what you're playing as much as what you're playing. Uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we all have our different isms that we think about. But um, yeah, I think for time, it's finding that kind of, for me anyways, finding that medium rate, no matter what the tempo is, to make it feel good. You uh, reminded me of feel steady without, because without, um, if you're just thinking one, two, oh. three, that's very difficult to keep true, to keep it really on, on the beat. But if you're thinking, and, and it could be in funk, too, if you're thinking, E and a, two E and a, but you're just playing quarters. You can do that if yeah. you're if you're thinking of this medium rate in your head. What what makes playing slow even more difficult? And one of our great friends is a master at this, John Ferraro, is when you're playing very slow and triple forte, because there's not much chance of you have to be on it at that point because the whole world is hearing. Um, yeah. Some of the early Barry Manlow things, I think, is, am I right? He was with him way back in the day. He was, yeah, in the 80s, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. remember seeing him once, Leon and it impressed bass, me so yeah. much. They were playing something about as slow as you played the slowest tune there, and he was playing it as loud as you possibly could. And it's like there was, as somebody once said here on a Dinah Washington tune that was very slow, the, the top mm -hmm. of the chart said quarter note equals August. It was, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. forever. Yeah. Uh, also heard. reminded me of one other quick story, um, yeah. which is so subtle. But Peter Erskine was here with a trio, and they oh, did Killer Joe. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was about thinking of time. And he did exactly what you're talking about. He said, I'm going to play it, and I'm just going to think of the quarter note. And right. I'm going to think of the, the eighth. Da, da, da. As an upbeat, yeah. And you, you, didn't, you knew how he was thinking about it every eight bars. And sure enough, when you heard it, there's something different about the way that the it sounds. feels. The feel of it, yeah. yeah. It was bizarre, but so, so true. Uh, Thank you so much, you know. Thank you, Don. Yeah, a lot a of the things we can tell you here is it all comes from the, uh, the words of wisdom. I guess that's what we call Secrets of the Rose. There you go. Hey, <laughs> check out our it. live lesson. <laughs> also, uh, Chad's amazing course, which is something that we've had so much positive response from so many drummers who have taken it. Um, I told you we had an email from somebody recently who got a full ride scholarship to Berkeley. Um, Fantastic. And yeah, Great. absolutely, by taking some of the courses we have here on Drum Channel. Great. Um, if you're up for practicing, like a, a, a mentor of mine once said, if you're serious and you're really serious, <laughs> that was one of Freddie Gruber's comments, of course, right. um, and you're going to practice and you want to get into you know, taking his, his course, which is 30 or more lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but when you took with Murray, you had to practice how many hours a day? Two hours minimum. Two hours minimum a day. 
Uh, so if you're going to do it and really work at it and have it completely change your life, uh, plan on putting some, now you don't have to do two hours a day. I know you might not have that, but you have the luxury of not having to see Murray Spivak every two weeks also, <laughs> which you had to see, so you had no choice. <laughs> and to also, a student, yeah, 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 it was required, yeah. Also the big band sight reading uh, uh, lesson that we have up here on Drum Channel. Uh, and some more of the secrets of the pros. And we're going to see you when we do our live lesson. Check that out Great. here on the site, too, and live lesson rebroadcast. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Don. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.